Okay, so this is what we got made for our last project. So what we're gonna be doing is something like this. We're gonna be turning it into a storage case for our patterns. So we'll turn it up like that, measure roughly like an inch and a half down, mark it with our chalk, pin it together, and then just sew it on top like this. Folds over, put a tassel right here, and a snap, and you end up with this right here, a storage case. For our patterns to go in like that now that's what we're going to be doing in class next time but what this project is I want to show you a different uh, way thing you can make out of this and we're going to make a book bag with it so in your bag is an additional piece of pattern it says book bag strap it says cut two of fabric and cut one of interfacing so that's what I've done here, and I've already went ahead, I've cut me two pieces, right side up, and on the back side of one, I've already uh, ironed down my interfacing on this, um, because of it sliding around and stuff, but you don't have to, you can just sew it on if you want to pin it, hold it together really good, and sew it on. Okay, so now we're going to do this the same way we did the main body part, we're going to sew it together, leave an opening and turn it right side out. I think I'll leave my opening at the bottom. I'm pinning it together, pinning it in the middle, pinning on each end. Hopefully that'll hold it together enough to where I can sew it together without it coming all apart. All right, so I'm gonna start right here down the side, you know, half inch, three-eighths inch, seam. Okay, so I'm finishing up back down here to where I started. I'm on the other side. I went all the way around. Taking out my pins. And then once again, I'm um, opening right here. Open it between the two fabrics, not between the interfacing and the fabric, but between the two fabric faces. And I'll start working that big long piece inside out. You think that's not, it's going to be impossible, but it's not. Just push with your fingers. If it gets tight, you can pull a little bit out this way. Go back and push more with your fingers in this way. So this is just going to take a few minutes of working this long strap right side out. Okay, so we've almost got it pulled right side out. Just reaching it down there with my fingers and pulling it out a few inches at a time until it's, and there we go, we're at the end. And what did I do? I forgot to clip my corners. So I got a puffy corner there. Just what I told y'all last time not to do. Did not clip my corners. So I've got a thick wadded up corner there. All 
All right, so now I'm gonna go down on this end, the unsealed end, and sort of fold it in. And sew it closed, just like we did the opening on the main body of the pattern. Sewed it closed. Now this also needs to be top stitch because there is interfacing in there which is making it stiff. Um, so it needs to be top stitched. So once again like before I'm just putting the edge of the fabric to the edge of my foot and just running the top stitch making sure that my seams are mashed out neat and flat before I sew over them or it can twist really easy. Uh, you can iron it before you start so that you don't gotta fight it. If you're worried it'll wad up or it's gonna turn sideways, just iron it. And then you can have your edges already nice and flat. You don't gotta work them down as you sew. There we go, I've got my strap made. I'm gonna lay this aside. And we're going to make a homemade tassel for, so I'm using a contrasting fabric, whereas on this one, I made it with the material that was used on the outside. So depending on, but since this is a loud uh, fabric, I think something that so I just took like a rectangular piece of fabric like this about six inches long and that's probably about four inches wide three or four inches wide and I'm folding it in half and then I'm just making little cuts in it but I'm not going all the way to the edge I'm leaving about an inch of folded fabric at the edge So I open it up, and that's what we've got. It's going to turn it over, and I'm going to roll it. I'm going to roll it as tight as I can. It doesn't have to be super tight, but it doesn't need to be really loose either. Okay, so I've got it rolled like that. Now I'm taking these other two strips of fabric that I cut, also probably about six inches long, putting one in the middle and tying the middle. Okay, I'm tying it closed. Now this is going to be my piece, that's my two arms that I'm going to use to attach it to my case. Now I'm folding it in half. And using this other piece to go around it this way. And I'm tying that on. That way. And so I've got my fabric tassel. Now this is going to be the piece I'm going to use to fasten it and so I can see my ties right here hanging down longer than the main part so I'll just trim it off to where it all blends together. Alright, we're going to lay that aside with our strap. Alright, let's put our pattern up. Okay, now like I said, for what we're doing in class, the storage case, we would be folding it this way and putting a seam on the top and putting a snap and that's it. It's a storage case. But we're making, this uh, pattern actually has three options you can make with it. One of them is a baby changing pad. If instead of putting interfacing, if I would have put batting in there, or I could still leave the interfacing and just add batting, then it would be slightly puffy. And this would, um, this is how they make uh, 
baby changing pads to go in a diaper bag. Then you just put a snap on it, and then when someone wants to get it out of their diaper bag, they unsnap it, lay it out, lay their baby on it. Um, I think it would be good to make it out of like a vinyl or a wipeable fabric, but it's not necessary because it would be washable. Okay, so that's option one, and we're doing option two, which is the storage case like this. We're making the storage case for our patterns. Now there's an option three, and this is just optional. We will not be doing this in class. I'm just going to show you this so that you can do it at home. You can get your own fabric and use that pattern to make another one of these out of your own uh, fabric. And then, like I said, you will need to make you a strap and a tassel and so it's the opposite way around to make the book bag we're actually going to sew our right sides together and we're going to measure down when we made the case we measured down roughly an inch and a half but for this we're going to measure down two inches Actually, let's go with two and a half inches. No, let's go with two inches. You'll see why later. I'm going to be taking some of it, the play up in the bottom, making a bottom. All right, so we're going to measure two inches. All right, so now we're going to fold our piece like this. And where's my pins? And just pin it to hold it together so it doesn't come undone as I'm moving it through the machine. So to make the book bag, we're pinning it good sides together. And now we're going to sew it. And I'm just going to run my stitch. And my, just follow my old seam. It gives me a good guide good point. Keeping the edges together as much as possible. And then the other side. When you're sewing through um, something thick like this, uh, you need to have your larger needle in because if you have your thin needle, like for sewing delicates, uh, it will break it um, and you need to go slow. What I did just right there, reversing it made the needle shift and that fabric was so thick I heard it, it almost broke it, um, but it didn't. So you wanna have your thicker needle in and um, go slow. Don't be frustrated if you're thread breaks that's a lot of pressure and tension it's not really made to be through uh, sewing through such thicknesses um all right now before we turn this uh right side out we're actually gonna how we're gonna make the bottom in our book bag is we're gonna open it up put my hand in there open it up and I'm going to mash down that corner. See how I mash that corner down like that? I'm gonna put me a pin there just to hold it open. And then I'm going to measure, how far back you measure is how big it makes the bottom of your bag. I'm going to measure back approximately an inch and a half because this is kind of a small bag and if I make it too big okay so I'm gonna mark my chalk on there at the end of my end of my measuring tape at an inch and a half and I'm gonna also do that to the other corner put my hand in it open it up Mark it at an inch and a half. All right, now I'm going to put it on my machine. 
and you want to keep that triangle as uniform as you can it'll slide to one side or the other but you've got that interfacing in there so it's not going to be as bad as it would be if your fabric was loose okay and i'm going to sew this i said mine's at roughly an inch and a half inch and three quarter Across. Once again, slow because I'm going through several layers of fabric and interface in there. I don't want to jerk my needle, it'll break it. Okay, my other side. Putting my needle down in the fabric before I start, reversing, sort of seal off the edge there. Reversing at the end. All right, taking my pin out. Then I'm going to turn my bag right side out. Now let's see what we've got. And there we've got the beginnings of our book bag and you see how that's different from our storage case this one we just folded it sewed it flat this one we put right sides together sold it and then and then to, uh, turned it right side out put our little seam in the bottom to make it have a bottom so now we're going to take our uh, we're, we're gonna be attaching our strap here at the side um, so we're going to turn this, like I could just sew this down like that, but it, it wouldn't really give us um, the right amount of room. Now, if you had a thin uh, ribbon that you were going to use as a strap, well, obviously you couldn't use ribbon because it would break, but, you know, like uh, some type of plastic strap or leather strap, something you took off a purse, you, that might would work because that's not going to take up much room and it would just fold over there at the corner. But we're sewing on this kind of wide one. So I'm taking this corner and I'm I'm not folding it exactly over even I'm coming sort of in like that that's kind of an odd an odd um, shape there and then I'm just going to you know what, I think I'm going to go ahead and let's pin it to hold it in place and let's go ahead and all right, let's turn our other one in just kind of bringing the point in and down a little bit. Sort of an odd shape. It's not a perfect scenario, um, but it's, the reason we're doing this is, is we need this flap to come in a little bit because once that strap is there, so we need room for it to come over like that. So it's giving us a little bit of space. All right, so I'm gonna take and just sew along the edge there. I'm actually going to start back where I can see my old my old seam and the reason I'm doing that is that way when we turn it over on the top side it'll look like one continuous seam so I'm just sewing along the edge of the fold Again, slow because that's a lot of thickness there. Take out my pen. So on this side, you can see that it's just sort of like a continual seam there. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing here. And on this, I'll just sew it on the top side, and I can see right where my okay. Now, this is what we've got. And see, this is going to make the flap to where it can close 
have a little bit more room to close once we put the strap on. Now, I've already put the strap on on this side. And as you can see, I sewed like a square shape seam uh, when I fasten it. And that's a common way that they do straps. They actually go crisscross sometimes. But I just went in the middle and then did my square shape. Now, I'm actually going to fold this strap in half like that when I attach it. And then I put it on the, the front piece of fabric, attach it to the side there. And I recommend that you, um, you might want to do this by hand if you're not familiar with your machine because you can see how many layers of fabric this is. It's going to be really thick and my machine is really going to uh, balk at sewing that on there. And it will very easily break a needle. And you'll want if if you watch how I do it, I'm actually gonna walk the um, I'm actually gonna walk my needle in uh, with my knob on the side rather than just smashing the um, the foot pedal a lot during this. Because anytime I'm mashing the foot pedal and the needle stops and it doesn't want to go, rather than pushing it on and it'll wad or break, then I roll it with my knob roll my knob in okay now here I can I can feel where the end of it is so I'm turning it I went across through the middle first just to attach it and now I'm doing my square my square seam and that's actually a little bit too far because it's not I can tell it's not gonna go through right there it's too thick all right so I'm turning it and doing the bottom part once again very slow trying to pay attention to the tension on my needle I'm walking I'm rolling the knob with my hand right here because it's too thick the machine's not doing it it would break if you feel pressure against your needle uh, don't force it it will snap on you it's not really made to a um, sewing machine's not really made to go through that many thicknesses of fabric. You might just want to do it by hand. All right, see it's a little bit thinner right here. My machine may do it. I see it's, see it's not gonna go in. I'm pushing, rolling it in with the knob. Rolling it in with the knob, there it goes. Okay, so we've got both of our straps sewed on now. <laughs> and I just did one of them backwards. Okay. And so that's what it that's what our purse, our book bag, tote, whatever you'd want to do with it, that's what it looks like. Okay, and well, I could put a snap right here, uh, or a piece of velcro, but I'm just gonna put a tassel, and the weight of my tassel will hold it down good enough for me. So to put that tassel on, once again, all you've got to do is just, see these are the two pieces that we tied it up with and left to attach it. I can um, just sew through that by hand, but since I'm always doing things the quick way, this will leave a little place on the front, but I'm just gonna sew a stitch across, reverse again, just make it, two or three times across to where it's strong enough to and then just cut off the excess like that of course it needs to be cleaned up with all the strings and everything but that's what you've got you've got your book bag and some people let me get this bottom pulled out some people will actually cut a piece of cardboard from a cereal box and lay it in the bottom there to keep it stiff all the time but once you've got stuff in there, it fills out pretty good. And that's your option, uh, book bag option with that pattern.